This has passed several tests and has all the certifications to fly commercially already here in China. The, the price for this one? 410,000 USD. Uh, it's controlled by the flight system, also on the ground. If mm. anything happens, the ground control center will take off the aircraft. Okay, this looks nothing like a car or a helicopter or an airplane. This is a mix between all of and them. As you can see here, these are the propellers. The actual thing that makes this a flying car. Later, I'll show you how. In the past few years, something unusual has been happening above china's cities no planes or drones but flying cars and autonomous air taxis moving from prototypes to real products what sounded like sci-fi a decade ago is now becoming a serious national project and in this video we're taking a look at the most prominent companies that are investing heavily in these so-called flying cars china called this the low altitude economy and the government believes it could become a multi-hundred billion dollar industry in the next decade. Cities are building new air routes and vertiports. Regulators are approving aircraft faster than almost anywhere else. And companies like Ihang, Xpeng, Hongqi and Zero-G are racing to bring flying vehicles into everyday life. Ihang is probably the most visible player in this whole space. Their fully autonomous passenger EV tolls were the first in the world to get type certification approval in China, which basically means the aircraft is officially cleared to fly passengers. Juancho, they've been in the market for a while, developing different kind of systems and technologies and solutions like this one. What is cool is like this has passed several tests and has all the certifications to fly commercially already here in China. It's quite comfortable. I mean, if we're talking about like 20 minutes trip, it's developed basically for the concept of aerial taxis. It's fully electric and the design is quite futuristic. It has 16 motors that power this beautiful machine. And the fact that it's, it can already fly commercially it makes it quite important as one of the first EV tools that is available in the market. They have already done thousands of pilot-led demo flights across different cities, at parks, tourist spots, and even during big public events. The price, 400,000 US dollars. I mean, I guess probably is oriented for companies. I don't know if I, like a regular person might be able to buy it. If I have the money, honestly, maybe I'll be interested in investing in one of these beautiful vehicles. And the craziest part is that you can actually buy one of their aircraft right now. Just like a high-end car and use it for short flights or sizing routes approved by local authorities. So Evito is like an electric vertical taking off and landing. It's very small and tiny. It's very convenient used in the city. It can stop in the top of the building yeah. or every square or so just to reach the area is enough. We have 16 different independent motors and helicopter just have one or two right and we can stop any five motors in the sky and we can take keep stably and land in safety today more and more chinese makers are investing heavily in electric short-range aircraft and road and air hybrids designed for urban mobility and brands like ihang already have commercial flight approval with some models even open for pre-orders china is the world's factory but finding the right factory isn't always easy. At China Business Gateway, we make product sourcing simple, transparent, and stress-free. Our team is based right here in China. We find verified manufacturers, negotiate direct factory prices, and handle everything from sampling to production follow-up. Whether you're a startup or a global brand, we're your local team in China, making sure your products are done right, on time, and at the right price. China Business Gateway your trusted sourcing partner in China. This is uh, our first generation battery. We can fly 25 minutes okay. and uh, 30 kilometers. Uh, air taxi, mm -hmm. maybe in the future you can use the Uber or DD can take the air taxi in China, maybe next year. Okay. Uh, the maximum speed is about 130 kilometers per hour. We have got the certification in China. And we also this year we got the commercial operation. 
So this year we do a lot of lot of commercial tests. Okay. So for next year we will do the commercial operation so people can buy tickets and have tickets like uh, touring in the sky, like helicopter. The, the price for this one? The price? 410,000 USD. Yeah, and last year we have sold 216. Oh, you already sold 216? Yeah, yeah. We, 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 we sold this by 2019. This is second generation. Second the generation. first generation we show in the CES in 2016 in the US. And now our our commercial operation. So just to be two passengers to see here and we sit your belt. Uh huh. And this screen. So what will people see in this uh, screen? Uh, I just to have some a map and the information of the 16 motors mm -hmm. and also the battery, the height, mm -hmm. the speed. If it was very new things to, mm -hmm. to public and nobody know this. Yeah. And I think the public, uh, they were afraid of this one because this is autonomous. Okay. So, you know, when I first uh, to try this, I also fear. Have you tried before? Yeah, I tried a lot of times in oh, our really? company. Yeah, because every day we do a lot of tests. Okay. So you see here, just like a lift. Mm -hmm. Very, very smoothly to taking off and mm -hmm. landing is also smoothly. Mm -hmm. well, I also have air conditioning. I can see here the bench right there. This first generation, we don't have air conditioning. Okay. Uh, just the, the, the weighing system. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, it will to, help to, also. To, to, to change the air air quality. So in the second generation, we have the air conditioning. Okay, so people enter here, fasten their seat belts, and just start traveling. They don't need to do any interaction with the screen whatsoever. Yeah, because this machine is controlled by our system. Right. So, they, they, they don't have any control. Here they will see the route of the trip, right? Yeah, the route. So just press it here. Press the red button and open it. Oh, yeah. It's very easy. Yeah. Right, very yeah. nice. Yeah. Okay, oh, that's, that's really cool. China is leading this industry for a few simple reasons. The market is huge. The country has the manufacturing power to build these machines at scale and regulators are moving quickly. Our next company is Zero G a very promising startup that recently raised close to 100 million yuan to push certification and production. There are a lot of companies here in China proposing different kind of huge futuristic vehicles. I really can't wait to see that in the sky. This is one of them. The shape is perhaps more like a helicopter. Actually, the main difference, of course, is going to be an electric one and it's just for two people. Nobody is controlling this machine from inside, meaning it's being controlled from the land, and there is an automatic system that will control the takeoff, the moving, and the landing in a very specific spot. The main purposes for this one perhaps going to be commercial in the near future, perhaps some sort of park or touristic development for recreational purposes, also perhaps taxis for short distances. There are several interesting features here. Perhaps the main one is the main screen where the passengers will have access to the flying information. Of course, it's also made by very light materials in order to make the flying more efficient when it comes to energy. Some of their smaller electric aircraft will be delivered for tourism and training and they're now working on scaling up to bigger eVTOL models built specifically for short distance travel and scenic flights. This time we bring our passenger carrying eVTOL so it can carry two passengers uh -huh. and no pilot. You don't need any pilot certificates, okay. you can just enjoy your flight. So it's and, controlled from the ground? Uh, it's controlled by the flight system, oh. also on the ground. If mm. anything happens in the air, then the ground control uh, center will take off the aircraft and then they can take control of the aircraft. So you can see inside and there's nothing to control. You just have a screen, then you can see um, go and like the time, the range and, and the, everything. It just show uh, where, where you want to go and where are you. How long yeah. can it fly? 20 minutes and around 20 kilometers. We designed the battery as a swappable, so you can change the battery in five minutes. Uh, you can just swap the battery? Yeah, swap the battery. Okay, yes. is it already flying in the sky? Has this yeah, fast? our prototype has been test flight many times. And right now, this is just uh, like the, the, the model. And we also apply the type certificate, which is um, you have the aircraft you want to go to market, then you need to get the certificate. Hopefully, we will get the certificate next year. Okay. and then put in operation. Right now we have a price, but we might change in the future. Okay. So right now price is around 350,000 US dollars, uh, around the 2.5 million RMB. 
uh, right now you can order like pre-order if you want to get the, this one then we need to uh, get the our certificate then uh, we can deliver the product to you this one uses electricity so the electricity brings the low cost and it's more affordable to, to, to this one because the, the price is lower, the maintenance cost is lower. Yeah. So everyone can uh, enjoy it. Yeah. Rather than the helicopter, the price you know is, a, is a very expensive. This is not just about personal flying. China sees a full ecosystem here. Tourism flight, sightseeing routes, air taxis between districts, emergency response, and even low altitude logistics. What do you think is going to be the main scenario for the use of this kind of TV tool? It's like a personal use, commercial use? In different time period, they have different scenarios. So at first, you know that the sky isn't uh, really open at this moment. So it probably gonna use in some closed and uh, clean uh, scenarios like the tourism. For example, around the, the mountain or the river, then maybe more than 20 kilometers range is a tourism place. Yes. So you, you have the control of the space. Yeah, totally then you, you don't need to apply like flight lines with others. It's easier for you to control the aircraft. Yeah. The tourism first, and then with the infrastructures we're building, and also for the skies open and the, the, all the flight, flight line is being designed. Yeah. The public is more acceptable to this. So evolutionary rate change to the, the air mobility, yeah. then it takes time. A few years back, Xpeng Arrow HD showed off one of its most eye-catching flying cars concepts. This blue car that hid all its propeller inside the body. At first glance, it looked like a normal futuristic EV. But with one command, the roof and panels opened up the arms extended and the propellers deployed for vertical takeoff. It looks very futuristic as you can tell. The seats are very sporty, what you can find on a racing car perhaps. Uh, the front panel is just kind of like a transparent screen. Actually you can see how simple and minimalistic it might look like in the future. Like you have this kind of steering wheel to control the direction of the car and you have also this kind of like a joystick. It was one of the boldest attempts at creating a true drive-and-fly vehicle, blending the look of a regular car with the ability to lift up like a drone. Even though this specific prototype never made it to production, it became one of the early designs that proved how ambitious Xpeng flying car program really was. You can see here, these are the propellers, the actual thing that makes this a flying car. The process to switch from a regular car to a flying car. The propellers are right now opening four different propellers to make of this beauty, of this beast, a flying machine. Ever wanted to visit China's biggest trade fairs, but not sure where to start? At China Business Gateway, we make it easy. Join one of our exhibition visit packages and experience China's trade shows with full support from arrival to departure. We take care of registration, accommodation, transportation, translation, and even help you plan your supplier meetings in advance. Want to visit factories after the fair? No problem. Our packages include optional factory tours so you can meet suppliers face-to-face -face and see production firsthand. Source smarter, travel easier. Join China Business Gateway for your next China trade fair. China is home to a growing number of companies working on EVTOL aerial taxis, and several of them have already developed models that offer a glimpse into the future of urban transportation. This is an EVTOL that can actually already fly. It's going to be for sale in 2027, and it's going to bring a lot of innovation to the way we move around cities. The design is very futuristic. It looks so good inside. It can accommodate up to four people at the same time, and I think we're definitely ready to try it out. It's exciting to see how this technology is quickly shaping the way we might get around in the years to come. This is a self-driving car. It's 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 a self
两百公里以内的城际出行，它有八个电动的垂起的螺旋桨，可以解决垂直起降的问题。那这种垂直起降呢，其实它本质上是把我们原来呃通航飞机从远郊的郊区服务带到了。城市成为一种新型的城市服务，来解决更好的人的点对点的这种出行。Okay, this looks nothing like a car or a helicopter or an airplane. This is a mix between all of them. You have all the amenities that you might need to have a very comfortable trip in here. You have the space, the seats, air conditioning, controllers. Even a small table for having your food in here. I think if this is the way we're going to travel in the future, I'm going to like it. Both automakers and EV startups are joining in, bringing their experience in batteries, motors, and mass production. The car manufacturer Hongqi also entered the space with one of the most premium concepts: their modular drive and fly prototype, revealed at Auto Shanghai 2025. Uses a split body design with a detachable fly pod and an aerial range of around 200 kilometers. It targets high-end buyers and VIP travel, and they are testing versions with quieter rotors and panoramic cabin designs. Some reports say Hongqi is already trialing the system with government partners for emergency transport and special event mobility. Some prototypes use modular designs that let you drive on the road and take off using a detachable flying module. Most of them are EVTOL air taxis that lift off like a drone or drive and fly vehicles that can switch between modes. Xpong AeroHT, now rebranded as Avrich or Arich, is developing the land aircraft carrier, a road vehicle with a detachable flying module. It's aimed for outdoor use and private buyers. And the company has already shown real flight demos at air shows. This land aircraft carrier, a modular car plus aircraft system, is one of the company's most notable breakthroughs. The ground module is a rugged three-axle six-wheel electric vehicle that acts as a mobile charging base for the detachable flying unit. Sitting on top is a six-rotor carbon fiber eVTOL that can operate in both autonomous and manual flight modes. It's one of the most practical attempts so far at creating a real road and air hybrid vehicle, something that can drive through a city then lift off when needed. To support this scale, Airich has built a 120,000 square meter smart factory in Guangzhou, designed to blend automotive and aviation grade manufacturing. Once fully operational, it is expected to produce up to 10,000 flying vehicles per year, with a new aircraft rolling off the line every 30 minutes. The first production unit is already complete and will be used for intensive test flights before customer deliveries begin, which are currently targeted for 2026. Alongside the modular model, Airich is developing a long-range hybrid tilt rotor eVTOL called AA68. A six-seat aircraft with more than 500 kilometers of range and top speeds above 360 kilometers per hour. It's meant for intercity or regional travel rather than short hops inside a single city, and it's already in the test flight phase. The company is actively validating performance, control system, and safety in real conditions. This model could help China to build out a more integrated low-altitude mobility ecosystem, low-range flying cars. Plus longer-range air taxis that rival helicopters or small regional aircraft. Government forecasts say that low-altitude market could pass 400-500 billion dollars by the 2030s, and it's clear from the pace of development that China wants to own that future. The country's bet is simple: the next big evolution in transportation won't happen on the road; it will happen in the air. And right now, the country is moving faster than anyone to make flying cars an everyday reality.